Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number I have no idea. Uh, and this is going to be the shortest intro ever because I've only got a few minutes and it has been an enormous week. I am not even sure who you're going to hear in the interview next. I honestly am not. Usually I look it up, but I'm, you know, usually several months ahead of time. So I need to look it up and remind myself about what we talked about. I don't even have time to do that. So um, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. I'm sure it's going to be fabulous. So <laughs> please stick around and enjoy that. What is going on around here? Literally everything. Hush Little Baby came out. Yay! I have um, a book launch party today as this episode drops on May 14th. So if you get this in time, you can come to uh, Murder by the Book to my book launch. And if you're a writer, you may want to kind of see what an online book launch looks like. You can find the info for that at murderbooks.com slash heron. My last name, H-E-R-R-O-N. Also, the house is uh, torn apart, empty, vacant as of today. If you're looking at me on the podcast, um, on the YouTube, I am wearing overalls because it's that kind of day. I am so grubby. I should not be allowed in my co-working space, honestly, if they knew what I had done today. Um, It's been pretty insane. Like there's... Now we have no furniture as of right now, but last night, you know, we're sleeping on the floor on an, a blow up air mattress. Tonight, we've got a couple of nights at a hotel because we have nothing in the house and then it'll get staged. Uh, but basically, everything that needs to happen has been happening at the very last minute. Uh, quite an intense experience. And, you know, then we moved to New Zealand in 10 weeks. The go time, the actual go time has been this week. And just before I drove to the co-working space today, I drove with my wife with our cars full of the final boxes to put in our teeny tiny pod, which we will then repack and send on a pallet or two overseas. Uh, but it's, it's doing that kind of thing. And I'm freaking out a little bit. I'm also really happy and excited Um, kind of to step into this brand new adventure and also be launching a book at the same time is super, super awesome and super (laughs) exhausting. I don't think I've had more than five hours sleep for the last four or five days. So uh, tonight I'm hoping to sleep. I have done zero writing for for about seven days. Not even, I, I think I have journaled twice and I normally do my morning pages if you have never done morning pages I encourage you to try if you have never done the artist's way by Julia Cameron which is where the morning pages idea comes from I always encourage people to try that it is uh, three pages handwritten first thing in the morning and honestly it is a life-changing exercise and I basically do my morning pages every day and I have now for several years Um, I kind of go in and out of the morning pages, but I've been deeply in them. And the fact that I haven't even been doing that is very strange and feels very odd in my body. So I'm hoping to get back to that tomorrow uh, because tomorrow they're just going to be laying floor, flooring and carpet. And I can't help with that. I can just unlock the house and let them do that. So uh, that's where I am. (laughs) I feel silly and giddy and excited and very glad and honored that you are here with me listening to the show, even on a day when I'm giddy and excited and weird and um, have no idea who you're about to listen to. (laughs) Please enjoy. Please come find me on the socials uh, and tell me how your writing is going. I really, really care. I really love to hear this from you. So that is all. Um, Next week, I'll have more information on everything about the podcast, but this week we don't have it. So, uh, and that is just goes to show we can have a shitty first draft and move forward with our writing lives. I don't think this metaphor is working, but um, normally, you know, my metaphors are a little bit better. They'll be better in the future. <laughs> this does feel like a first draft podcast. Here we go. Enjoy the interview. Happy writing, my friends. Well, I could not be more pleased to welcome to the show today, Megan Scott Mullen. Hello, Megan. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I, we were just talking for a second before the show. I know you just ran in from the barn where the horse is sick. Yes. Horse is, horse is going to be okay? Horse is going to be okay. What? Kids are over the norovirus. This is my life. 
And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's is how chaos. To fit your chaos. Writing in around the chaos. Awesome. Let me give you a little bio for you. Um, Megan Scott Mullen comes to writing by way of a master's in architecture, a minor in opera, a professional career as a barn manager, and barn, I, it sounded like I said bar there different, and five years crash course as a mother. She currently resides in Colorado with her fellow zookeeper, husband, sons, horse, adopted stray cats, and corgi. She's an avid lover of everything nerdy from wars to trek, hobbits, who, and beyond. When she's not writing, she's cooking, dreaming of travel, coveting more corgis, and listening to audiobooks while hanging out at the barn. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I absolutely love your podcast. It keeps me going. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Doing the podcast and speaking to people like you is what keeps me going. So I want to talk to you about your process because how the hell do you do it all? That's what I would like to know. Because you're, how old are your kids? Um, two and five. So in theory this year, I would have had kindergarten to help me out, but not so much. Now I'm a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> That should also go on your amazing bio, <laughs> unofficial kindergarten teacher. What a freaking year. So let's talk about your writing process. How do you get it done? I want to know like how and where, when, all of it. Well, I wish I could say that I had some sort of process that looked great on Instagram and that I was uh, elated about. But I think the reason I reached out to you is that I'm operating in a land of middle grounds yeah. and a land of not ideals. And I don't think that I'm the only one. And I think so many of us do look at social media and do listen to interviews and think that everybody has it all together. I wanted to offer a realistic view of how someone is getting writing done, even though um, it does not look great on Insta. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. So because it's, so, it's such a easy fallacy to fall into believing. So what does writing look like to you on a day-to-day -day basis? So I, because of this last year, I had to find something that was sustainable. Yeah. And in my head, I had this picture of what being at home with little kids would look like um, with writing. And my corgi is coming to say hi. Sorry, hopefully he doesn't get in the shot. Great, my dog's probably gonna bark in a second. So yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I just think that... Um, rather than that, that clip art of the mom with the computer and her kid, I, I really had to be realistic about what my life looked like, what my kids were. And my kids are very light sleepers, very early morning risers and working in the mornings is really tricky for me. So I write in my closet <laughs> on, <laughs> on a floor chair. And I have pictures on my Instagram if anybody ever wants to take a look at my uh, really yeah. not illustrious setup. But I ninja out of bed um, about 30 to 45 minutes before my kids get up. And I have to do it like super silently. I can't get tea. I can't go look out the window. I can't work at my desk. I take my laptop and I sit literally in a dark corner where I can't wake up my husband and I turn off the internet and I yeah. do write. And it's, I love, I love that because when you are in a closet without internet, there is nothing else to do, but right. Like you don't have, Absolutely. you can't waste time. You're not going to accidentally look at Twitter. No, you know? no. And I, I have learned the long and hard way that I have to turn off the internet. Like I am the five-year-old because <laughs> otherwise, uh, I do get distracted by ooh, shiny. Yeah. Um, so I go, I usually spend about five minutes when I'm waking up to think about what I'm writing. Um, what I'm excited about writing that day. And then I aim for about 800 words, which really doesn't sound like a lot. Um, before kids, I was capable of uh, doing about 2000 words a day or in a session. But uh, these days, my bar, my minimum bar is about 200. And I consider that a successful day. It sounds so small, sounds but it does so add real. Up. And I want to encourage everybody. I wrote two books that are over a hundred thousand words last year. Um, one of which is the book that just came out my third in my trilogy. And then another one that I'm revising right now for sub for my agent. Um, and I wrote half of a romantic comedy fun project for myself. The little stuff really does add up. My, my goal as a, as a mom and a writer is to get enough done in the mornings 
that I feel like I've done it so that I can mm -hmm. turn off the writing part. I can mom sometimes during nap times, I get another 200, 500 words in sometimes right before bed, I can get another 200 in, but my husband really likes family time at night. So I try to respect it. It is messy. It's not beautiful. Um, it's piecemeal, but it does add up to be significant over a year. I love that you are saying this and I can imagine parents, especially mothers listening to this right now, like with tears in their eyes, because I have students who are writing in 10 minute increments, like the kids go down or they're, I had, I had a student just yesterday say, you know, my kids were playing peacefully. I know she, she came into the Slack and said, my kids are playing, playing peacefully. I'm going in. And 10 minutes later, she said, they just got in a fight. I'm done. This is, that is but exactly. she had that 10, those 10 minutes. And it really adds up. You have, um, you're with 47 North, um, right? Yes. Yeah. And your first book is, has more than a thousand amazing reviews. Um, it's, you're a best selling author and you're doing this in the tiniest, tiniest pockets and increments of time. And it is not pretty, but it's getting done. It isn't. And I think the thing, the thing about it is, I had a second kid, my second book and my second child were due at the same, on the same week. Right. No. So don't do it that way. If you can help it, it wasn't great. Um, it, having more children then takes your time more. And I have found that the more, the more my time is taxed, the more I have to remind myself, I have to focus on the writing. The other stuff will come. My platform will come my time to interact on so social media more will come. My time to do author engagements will come. I have to right now focus on the important part, which is getting words down on the page. And it's really hard because you see all of these other people out there doing all of these other things. Um, but I have to be a mom, especially in COVID when there is no other option. There's no, there's no childcare. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Yeah. Um, there's no real support other than my mom is wonderful. And sometimes like right now she has the kids so that nobody is screaming and bleeding into the, into the scene. In the podcast, yeah. <laughs> so I think that we all have these pictures of what it, what we'd like it to be like. And then we have to just live in the reality and do the work. Even if it's in those tiny increments of time, it does, it does add up over time, even though we wish it would be more significant. I think it's so great too, that you're prioritizing what needs to be prioritized, you know, your kids will always take priority over everything else. But your second most important thing that you do first thing in the morning when you open your eyes is get the writing done. So they, I, I call it, I, I talk about this often, but um, you're joining the smug club. Like, yeah, I got 600 words done today. And you can be smug for the rest of the day, no matter what, you got some done. And it's, it's about sustainability. And I wanted yeah. to talk about that, that word specifically because- I, I wrote it down when you said it, actually. It's so important. <laughs> Sustainability is different for everybody. Yeah. And it was a really hard, I, I hope everybody has a therapist. I can only see mine every once in a while, but it's something she and I talk about. Um, I am a very driven person. I'm type A and I met myself in COVID uh, because pavement met face because uh -oh. I'm so used to pushing really hard for deadlines and then taking a week or a month to recover. Um, even with writing, like mm -hmm. I have done those days where I've done 7,500 words a day for three days or four days to really finish and finish a draft. Mm -hmm. I, you, I cannot do that in, in this situation. And there are other parents who have to watch their kids for whatever reason, or have to work and have to watch their kids. Um, sustainable is the key word when you're trying to determine every day what you can do. So for me, I tried getting up at five in the morning. And I could not do it. It wrecked me as much as I was so mm -hmm. happy to get a thousand or 1500 words in. I could not do it. It ruined me as a parent for the day. I was short tempered with my kids. I didn't have the energy. And so I have had to find a sustainable middle ground where I get up sometimes only half an hour or 15 minutes before my kids are because mm -hmm. I'm awake enough. I feel rested enough and I can write and parent. And I think the sustainability piece especially right now, while people cannot find or get the support that they always need as a parent, dads suffer from this too. Yeah. You have to find something that you can do every day. And that's often so much less than we are actually capable of, but it's because we use that energy every single day and there's no recovery time. 
The thing is, like the 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 smallest, the lowest viable minimum that we can do on any day is so small, and it keeps us going. There are people who will dream, and this makes me really sad every time I think about it. But there are people who will dream about writing for their whole lives, mm-hmm. and then there are people who write eighty words a day. I have a friend who writes a hundred words a day. She has for. I think like 11 years now and she's written full books, but she only writes a hundred words a day and that's all she can do with her health. And it's truly amazing. How do you know when something has become unsustainable for you? So (laughs) therapy. Um, (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I suffered from this as a professional. It's one of the reasons I left the architecture profession. I am a don't listen to your body, go yeah. until you absolutely can't go anymore and then crash. Welcome. Person, right? Welcome, friend. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of us yeah. in this writing industry yeah. because I think the boom bust of the publishing really almost encourages this on its own. It's totally. really hard. It's hard to talk yourself into sustainable trajectory, right? So I think um, if you're happy to sit down and write, and if you have ideas, if you feel fulfilled when you're finished writing, and if you then can mentally let it go, I think that's a really good place, whatever that mark is. It might be a thousand words for you. It might be a hundred words for you. It might be 10,000 words for you. And you're a magic unicorn. And please come teach me how to do that. But <laughs> I was going to say, don't come to my hot tub party. You're much nicer than I am. <laughs> but um, I think sustainable is different for everybody else. I wanted to give people a picture into my sustainable yeah. because as a working publishing author, I think it's so easy to think that we should be doing 5,000 words a day. And wouldn't that be wonderful? But you can also be a published productive writer. I'm sure my agent wishes I could write faster. And so would I, but also she knows I'm working on it and I know I'm working on it and she's a mother and I'm a mother. And I think as long as I'm happy moving forward in the end, I will get there. I write as many books now, maybe fewer um, now that I'm full-time as I did when I wrote in 30 or 45 minute bursts before 12 and 18 hour shifts. It, Absolutely. That's, that, that, that is my sustainable. And it didn't change when I had more time to do it either. So this is so beautiful. What is um, your biggest joy when it comes to writing? Um, this is maybe kind of funny. I don't know. I love, so I love talking with people and I love sharing how I got published. I love sharing or hearing how other people got published. I love sharing my process. I love the interactive part of authoring. Um, I love hearing how people have, uh, read my books and it's changed their life. I love telling people how I have read their books and it's changed my life. The intrapersonal part really is a huge unexpected joy for me. When you're, when you're writing your first book, you have no idea what's on the other side. And Mm -hmm. I, I have found tremendous joy in the interpersonal part of like having author friends and helping them mold their books and having them help me mold my books. And it, it is a huge joy. The community and the outreach is my absolute favorite part of this. I know I should say it's the writing. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. You should say exactly, exactly what it is for you. And I was just talking to somebody else earlier about this today, that, that my writing friends understand me better than anyone else. They understand me better than anybody else in any of the other circles in which I spin. The writers are the ones who really, really get it. Can you share a craft tip of any sort with us? So I have two. I have one that's a little bit more of a, um, that's related to my, my, my child rearing that it is a a site that I used when I was really struggling. So I'm working on what I call an Everest project. Um, Ooh, I like that, that phrase. Yeah. It means it's really, (laughs) really hard for me. And so my, it, it took me by surprise. My first three books were an absolute breeze and a joy to write. Like they were fully formed in my head. Oh, wow. They were magic, right? Um, and I didn't realize that projects could be so hard. I'm working on a project, a rewrite right now. Um, and there have been times where getting that 200 bare minimum has been an absolute slog in my head. So I used a site called For The Words, the number four, The Words. It gamifies writing. So you can slay monsters and earn points by uh typing your words right 
So that that goes along with that whole type A personality too, right? (laughs) I guess so. I don't know. So I needed something to take the pressure off of my brain and by making it a game, it really, really helped. So it's not exactly a craft tip, but it is something if you are struggling, so say your kids are about to get up and you have 15 minutes and you just need to focus and you can't turn off your brain. It is something that really has helped. Is it one of those sites where you type into the site itself and then copy and paste the work out? Yeah. It is. There's a little bit of formatting to be done afterward, but I didn't not care. It, yeah. it made my, it made my draft go when it was not going on its own. So, and then the other craft tip I was going to share is more of a mental tip. And that's two, that's the five minutes I spend before I'm writing. And it's mm-hmm. not so much just planning out when I'm going to write. It's that I'm picking what it is that I'm excited about writing about the scene that I'm writing about and trying to get to that. I call it my candy bar. I don't know what other people call it, but I love that. if you can find, okay, if you're struggling with a scene, you need to t- ask yourself if you're struggling because it's boring and it's really boring, or if you're just having a hard time getting to the thing that you're excited about. I, I find that determining for myself what it is about the scene. Is it like witty dialogue? Is it the new magic system? Is it the, you know, the kiss, whatever it is that you're really excited about. It just helps me meet the page with a lot more excitement other than here I go. I'm in the, I call it, I call it the soggy middle. Yeah. I'm in the soggy middle and I don't really know what I'm doing. But if you think about the one thing you're excited about, that day, it, it does help. I have never heard anyone say it like that. And that makes so, 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 so much sense to me just to kind of push your own energy up a little bit, um, by doing that. I'm, I'm a five-year-old in my head. I, I don't know. <laughs> Promise me a candy bar and I will, I will do basically anything for a Cadbury cream egg. So uh, that might be my Cadbury cream egg moment. That's beautiful. You Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so, so much for that. Um, what thing in your life affects your writing in a surprising way? So I'm a horse person and I think, um, I never would have linked the two, uh, until I needed my horse for my mental health over, over COVID. Yeah. Um, the exercise, the, the sunshine and everything. I think for me, um, it's not so much this year. I, I do miss it. I used to clean stalls and I, that sounds like a terrible chore, doesn't it? But I, I, had, I had a horse when I was a kid and I just, I remember like, even the smell was great to me. Like it all worked for me. I, I mean, you try to explain how cleaning up poop is great to people and they just give you a weird look, but I realized how much um, doing something repetitive yeah. with my body so that my physical energy was getting taken care of helps my unlock my mental energy. And I would just spend like an hour every morning while I wasn't paying attention to what my hands were doing, just listening to a podcast, contemplating my plot. And I think that that can be translated into parenting. Like if you're folding laundry and you're not really having to pay attention, um, I think sometimes it's a great time shockingly or up in the middle of the night nursing I have done that too where you're just rocking and kind of zoning out um realizing I I could use that time to let my brain kind of run unchecked on my book kind of a surprising joyful time surprising and beautiful yeah really in a really big way I love that what is the best book that you've read recently and why did you love it I have been in a reading slump. Oh, I, I hate slumps. Terrible. I've been in a reading slump and a weird media thing. I'm considering it pandemic fatigue. Yeah. Um, but I've really, en- I have enjoyed some arcs. My, my friends have sent, um, I've been a, an audiobook listener recently though, like an avid aud- audiobook. That's how I can get through things. The most memorable one recently uh, is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. Hmm. So- it is an atypical read for me. I don't typically um, swing t- toward the literary side of science fiction, mm-hmm. but this was a hauntingly lovely atmospheric uh, story about a girl who arrives at a boarding house with some questionable things going on. And uh, it sounds almost like, was it like Gothic science yes. fiction in a way? 
Yes. Yeah. Um, lots of descriptions of like the dripping honey and the food and the squashy pillows and all of these intrigues in the middle of the night. Incredibly inclusive, a diverse cast. Mm. Um, just really a lovely, memorable, kind of haunting book. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. It just it mm-hmm. just went on my TBR pile. Um, one thing before we get to where we can find you on the internet, if if you if a new a new mother was to come to you, she's got a 10 month old and she says, I want to write, what's your one piece of advice for me? What would you say? This is going to be counterintuitive, but I'm going to say it's okay not to write. Um, that. Yes. They're, they're just, I have had two very complicated children. Um, luckily they're healthy now, but I had really complicated pregnancies, really complicated deliveries, really complicated babies. And I think sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves to be productive when our energies are best spent taking yes. care of ourselves. And my, my advice would be, if at all, just take care of yourself and take care of your kid. If it is an absolute need for you, the way it is for me to write, um, try just jotting ideas down in a journal. Is that enough? If it's not, then move the scale up to like, yeah, try 10 minutes a day, but make sure. I think it's different being a working writer when I kind of have to write and I have to make Mm -hmm. the juggle. Um, and I want to support people who are on that end as well, but, um, stories unfold in our minds and our hearts first. And I think it's okay to nurture them there for a little while or jot down notes or whatever it is. Um, because it is such a taxing time and we just, as a culture really don't recognize it. And sometimes it's okay to just not be able to do very much. And I wish somebody, you know, before I had children had said that to me, because I think we expect a lot out of mothers, but this this is exactly why I wanted to talk to you. And, and I don't think you could have said it better or more beautifully. And we can extrapolate that out to, to not just mothers, but when you're having when somebody's dying, when you're losing your job, when you're moving, when you just have to, we, we, and I don't, I say you, we have to be more forgiving for ourselves. And there are times when we can't write. And I think we tend to think we aren't writing if we're not putting words on the page, but having planned novels in the middle of the night in my head while I'm nursing my kid, I can say, if you're thinking about your book, if you're dreaming about your book, if you're making notes, if you're thinking about twists or witty banter, you are writing. That's it writing. may not be getting on the yeah. page very fast, but you are still writing. Perfect. Perfect, <laughs> Megan. Thank you so, so much. Where can we find you on the internet? Um, if you find me on Twitter, tell me to go write. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I am mostly on Twitter uh, at Meg Fuzzle uh, because I got that before I was a writer. <laughs> Um, sometimes on Facebook, my website, uh, could use a little dusting off, but mostly, I mean, Facebook and Twitter. And, um, I have a, the third book in my series is out the vigilante game. It just came out in paperback. And so, um, if anybody picks it up and reads it and wants to send me a picture, I would love it. Also, the covers are amazing. People should go look at your books. Can you give us a 30 second overview of the series? Sure. Um, and by the way, my covers are by Danny Schlitz. He is an amazing, amazing. comic artist and yeah. just worth his weight in gold. He's amazing. Um, my books are about a female comic book writer who solves crimes with her drag queen best friend and a dreamy detective. And they are a comic book. Uh, it's like a copycat comic book crime. And in the end, she gets to try to be a vigilante hero herself. So that's the third book is she actually gets to put on spandex and a cape and go. Ah, that's a really high concept and very well stated that log line that just makes me frantic to start reading. They're nerdy and hilarious and yeah. really escapist reading. And so I hope that people enjoy them. That's what we need right now. We need more of that. Megan, it's been such a delight to talk to you. Thank you, you too. Thank so, you. so much for this. And I know that you have, I know that you've changed some people's, um, hearts today and they feel a little bit better about where and they are. So thank if you. anybody needs support, truthfully, just reach out to me. And I, my mission right now is to try to support other parent writers. Oh, so. Thank you, Megan. Thank you so much for everything. Okay. Yes. Thank Happy you. writing. Happy Bye. writing. Bye.